How's it going guys? Will here. And around two months ago, I bought this Canon EOS R. And in that time period, we've had the release of the Canon R5, R6, and the Sony a7S III. So, let's talk about that. Before we get into it, I want to say I wasn't planning on making this video. I'm in between microphones at the moment, so I couldn't make the video I was planning to make. But seeing as it's pretty topical at the moment, in this video, I'm going to be talking about why I bought the EOS R, what I like about it, how it compares to the recent releases, and do I regret buying it. So first of all, I want to talk about one of the main reasons why I bought this camera. Camera, the value for money that it provided. I got this camera used from MBP, which is where I buy pretty much all my used camera gear. I'm not sponsored, but seriously, they are great. So I managed to get this whole system for a really great price. And even if I had waited for the new releases, I would have had to spend double the price to get that new system. Whereas with this, I was able to get into it at a fairly affordable price. And so as far as value for money goes, the EOS R was still pretty phenomenal. Next up, we're talking video, starting out with 4K. Now, obviously a lot of people consider this a weak point of the EOS R. I mean, it's got that 1.7 times crop, which is a lot. However, it can be incredibly useful at times. For example, when I was getting those shots of the animals the other day, a lot of them were pretty far away. And as I was an idiot and didn't plan properly, so I only bought this 17 to 40 lens. And that gave me that little bit of extra reach so I could get those shots. However, I'm not here to pretend that it doesn't have its drawbacks. Generally, I find the 4K crop on the EOS R is either incredibly useful or intensely irritating. Most of the time though, as I am coming from mostly APS-C and micro four thirds cameras. I personally don't mind the crop. In fact, I got used to it very quickly. Other than that though, the quality of the 4K on the EOS R is fantastic. Well, it does only go up to 30 FPS. It's very nice and detailed. It's available in all my codecs. So while the file sizes are enormous, it's a pleasure to work with on my system. And you can just push the video files that much further. Yeah, overall, I really like the 4K on this camera. And most of the time, this is what I'm using. Following this, we have 1080p video, which in the standard picture profiles is very good as it is. It certainly has no right to look this good. However, where it gets incredible is when you turn on the C-Log. As soon as you turn on the C-Log in 1080p, it looks both sharper and more detailed than any other 1080p I've ever seen. And while it does take a slight quality drop in 60fps, obviously, it does still look really good. And as long as you expose properly, you can get some really good looking 1080p out of this thing. In fact, a lot of the footage on this channel is now shot in that C-Log 1080p. My computer flies when I'm editing in this codec. And once it's upscaled to 4K, it doesn't look that much worse. So yeah, 1080p on this camera, really good. I personally think that this is one of the best features of this camera. Moving on, we have the autofocus, and this is personally one of the biggest reasons as to why I initially chose this camera. I wanted something where I could get those human-like movements without actually pulling the focus myself, because when you're panning and tilting, pulling focus can occasionally be pretty tricky. Now, on my old GH5, there was actually a manual focus pulling mode, but I didn't want to have to set these points. I wanted to be able to push in and, like, do sweeping pans and for the autofocus to simply naturally adjust so I wouldn't have to constantly concentrate on making sure it was in focus. So was it everything I hoped it would be? Absolutely. I've been able to get these totally unique looking shots where I've been able to dolly into smartphones and keep them in constant sharp focus. I also never have to check that I'm in focus when I'm doing these talking head sections, which just makes this so much easier. Face tracking and eye detection also both work great. I rarely find that it loses me. In fact, I'm using it right now and... There we go. And while it works well in all modes, I found the other day when I was capturing the majority of those shots, if you stop down half a stop, which I usually do anyway to maximize my lens sharpness, the autofocus performance on this thing will pretty much be flawless. It's also great in both 24 and 60 FPS, which are the main frame rates that I use. I never find it lagging or pulsing. And all in all, I found the dual pixel autofocus to be a fantastic experience. And as I said, everything I hoped it would be. All right, so now we're moving on to a little bit of a controversial one with this camera, slow motion. I, for the most part, use the 60 FPS. In fact, the 60 FPS was why I bought this over the a7 III. I like good 60 FPS. I find it's more functional for what I like to do. And yeah, as I mentioned before, the quality is great. Autofocus works well. And yeah, all in all, very good. However, what about the 120p? So the EOS R does actually have 120 FPS. However, it's only available in 720p, which honestly sounds terrible. It's 2020. And while well, on paper, that's absolutely true. When I put the EOS R in 120 FPS just for a little bit of fun, I had no intentions of using this for anything. I found that it didn't actually look that bad. I found that for most detail shots where I zoom in a little, I am totally fine with the quality of the 120 FPS on this camera, especially when it's upscaled. And while I certainly wouldn't recommend shooting in C, log in this mode. It looks fine for some YouTube videos. Again, I do just want to clarify YouTube videos. I certainly wouldn't use this for anything professional level. There's also
also no continuous autofocus or audio in this mode. However, as I come from a GH5, I personally don't really mind that. That is an issue for some people, but for me, as I only use it for casual fun shots anyway, I'm really not that bothered. So yeah, while this certainly isn't a slow motion camera, it's actually really good in 60 FPS and just for fun, very usable in 120 FPS. Next up, we have C-Log. And this is actually something that had a pretty sharp learning curve for me, which honestly, seeing as I'd shot S-Log before, I really wasn't expecting. At the start, I was constantly getting noisy footage and honestly, for a while, I just gave up using it. And boy, was that a mistake. I decided to reevaluate my grading and exposure techniques and before I knew it, it was honestly like I'd unlocked this superpower in my camera. C-Log really did take my footage to the next level. As I said before, when I was talking about the 1080p footage, it made my footage sharper, gave me a really nice smooth highlight roll off, more dynamic range, of course, it's a log profile. And in my opinion, it is definitely worth learning, especially if you have the EOS R. Seriously, it'll totally unlock your camera. After this, we have low light, which was actually pretty good. Now, it's not quite Sony standard, obviously. That said, it's way better than my old GH5 and Canon cameras. Obviously, it's not gonna be the best. I mean, this is a 30.3 megapixel sensor we're talking here. So it's not gonna be as mind blowing as like an A7S with 12 megapixels. But in my time using this camera, I haven't had an issue with an overly noisy image. And I've actually been able to push it a pretty long way as I showed in my previous video. Cause a lot of those sections were very dark. So I did have to crank the ISO and even at F4, it was still very usable. Now we're gonna be talking about the sensor. And of course, as video is only half the story, well, actually it's probably like three quarters of the story for me. But still, we need to talk about the photography side of things. In terms of the sensor, obviously this is a full frame camera and powering this is a 30.3 megapixel sensor. And some of you who have been following this channel for a while may know, this is actually my first full frame camera ever. Was it everything I hoped it would be? Was I getting those incredible background separations? Were my wide shots looking better than ever? Yeah. The depth of field I've been able to get on this camera is like nothing I've ever tried before. And the gorgeous scenic wide angles I've been able to get when paired with the nice wide lens have been an utter treat. And while that are the previously mentioned crops in certain modes, having that full frame sensor is very nice. Okay, so this considered, how is it for photos? So for what I do, which is mainly product photography, it's amazing. There's no, there's no other way to say it. It's amazing. Again, that full frame sensor means I can get really nice amounts of background blur. I can let more light in. And because it's 30.3, megapixels. When paired with a good lens, it's so sharp. I also very much like the time-lapse feature on this. I know this is technically a video time-lapse, not a photo time-lapse with an intra-bolometer, but still I have used this to get some quick shots before and despite not being able to change the frame rate from 30 FPS in 4K, which does kind of suck in my opinion, it's still a very useful tool to be able to get a little bit of quick B-roll when you're in an emergency and you just need a little bit extra. Coming from mainly, as I said, a micro four-thirds and APS-C background, this is probably the best photo camera I've ever had. Okay, so so now we're going to be talking about the IBIS or lack thereof. I have a little confession to make. I hate IBIS. That's not a joke. Every single camera I've ever had with IBIS, the IBIS has gone wrong. It goes wrong, it winds me up intensely, and it just makes my camera less functional. On the other hand, however, the digital image stabilization built into the EOS R is incredible. Again, while I don't like IBIS because it does make my cameras less reliable, it was really useful in the GH5. I got some really nice smooth looking footage, and honestly, with the digital stabilization on the EOS R, it's pretty much exactly the same. Granted, while it does crop in a little, in the non-enhanced mode, which is the one I recommend. It's only very slight, and in my opinion, things like warping have been practically non-existent. So pretty much whenever I'm shooting handheld, I have it on. All right, so comparing it to the recent releases of the A7S III and the R5, it's pretty clear it's quite underspecked in comparison. So does this matter to you? Maybe. To me, no. Don't get me wrong, I'm not pretending that EOS R is the perfect camera. Obviously, I would love to have 4K at 120 FPS. Uh, 8K, yes. But realistically, I gotta think about how often I would actually use these features. And to be honest, not often. If there were a couple of things I could change about this EOS R, obviously it'd be the crop factor. I'd also like 120 FPS in 1080p. I think that would be good. But over the last two months, I haven't really been struggling without them. And so for me to spend a lot of money, as I said before, seriously, the R5 is like four grand in the UK. Very expensive. For me to spend that much money to get features I probably wouldn't use that much, it just doesn't seem like the right choice for me. Especially when I got such a stable experience going with the art already. I don't think it'd be a good idea to completely switch my system again, spending a lot of money in the process for some features that I probably wouldn't use that much. Okay, so to wrap this video up, after my experience, do I regret buying it? 
No, it's everything that I need in a camera to make the stuff I want to make. And despite the fact that it's not as highly spec as some of the newer releases, the stability, the fact that it has everything I need and more, and the user experience that I've had while using this camera over the last two months has been unlike any camera I've ever had before. And I'm very glad that I settled on this in the end. All right, so do you own the EOS R and are planning to upgrade to either the R5 or the A7S III? Let me know in the comments. As for now, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this and smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now and I will see you guys in the next one.